So excited that you guys are here. Welcome to North Shore family. Uh, see some faces that we haven't seen in a while. People in town visiting. Uh, I know um, we're just excited to gather together and uh, praise God this morning. So if you would stand as you're able, and we're just going to jump into some praise and worship this morning. And I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb till I met you. I was breathing but not alive. And all my failures I tried to hide. It was my tomb till I met you. You ready? You called my name and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day. You called my name. I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day. And now your mercy has saved my soul. And now your freedom is all that I know. The old made new. Jesus, when I met you, you called my name, you called my name, and I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness, into your glorious day, you called my name. rescue my sin was heavy the chains break at the weight of your glory i needed shelter i was an orphan now you call me a citizen of heaven and i was broken you were my healing now your love is the air that i'm breathing i have a future my eyes are open because when you call my name You called my name, I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness, into your glorious day. All right, we're going to go back to that bridge, declare it this morning, we need a rescue. I needed rescue, my sin was heavy, but chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan, now you call me a sinner. Sing it again, I need rescue. Needed rescue, my sin was heavy, but chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan, now you call me. One more time, church, needed rescue. I needed rescue, my sin was heavy, but chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan, now you call me. You were my healing, now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future, my eyes are open, cause when you call my name, I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness, into your glorious day. You call my Day. 
Amen, amen. Give God a round of applause this morning. He is good. He is good. going to celebrate God's faithfulness today. I know Josh has a great message for us uh, regarding that. So let's just kind of declare, um, great is thy faithfulness. Amen. <clears throat> and great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. And as thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. Join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Pardon and sin and the peace that endureth thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Strength for today, a bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with ten thousand besides. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, to mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Lord, unto me. Amen, amen. <clears throat> God of Abraham. You're the God of covenant, of faithful promises. And time and time again, you have proven that you do just what you say. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak of 
Your faithfulness is great, and we can always rely on you. We praise you. We worship you this morning. Amen. Amen. Have a seat for just a minute. Amen. Thank you, and good morning to, to all family. 
want to say some shout outs to those that are joining us online. Got Shelby and the family. Hello to Heather and Jaime and all the kids. Uh, to Mary Tipton, to Donna, to Dana, to Lana, uh, to Curtis and others that are joining us. God bless you. Thanks for, for being here and welcome to, to uh, you. Uh, as we continue on, uh, let's just pause for a moment and, and pray for those things that maybe you brought in that hopefully uh, our prayer would be that you could lay it down for a second. That you could take a little time out uh, and the things that you've got going on or trying to juggle, uh, pause for just a second, focus in on the, the Lord and His faithfulness, and I pray that He would do a work in and through us. So if we could pray together. Uh, Lord, I, I thank you for this time that we're reminded of your faith, faithfulness. Uh, that you never change. Uh, even when we are unfaithful, you're still faithful. Uh, I'm grateful uh, that uh, we can lean and, and live on your promises. Uh, Lord, we bring to you the things that uh, might be weighing us down or uh, holding us uh, to where we're, we're feeling tense in this moment. Uh, God, even where we're tired or we're busy or we don't see the end, uh, Lord, I, I pray and we bring these to you. Uh, we uh, lay them at your feet for a moment. We pray that we would recognize your presence, uh, that we would see your glory and your faithfulness and your mighty and your nature and your character, uh, that we would focus in on you and that you would do a work in our heart. Uh, Lord, thank you that we can live by the promise that you're coming again soon. Uh, and I would pray e even so. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand? is coming soon call every sinner wake up the saint let every nation shout of your fame Jesus is coming soon like a bride waiting for her groom we'll be a church Ready for you, every heart longing for our King. We sing, even so come, Lord Jesus, come. Even so come, Lord Jesus, come. There will be justice, all will be new. Your name forever, faithful and true. Jesus is coming soon. Like a bride waiting for her groom, we'll be a church ready for you. Every heart longing for our King, we sing, oh, even so come. Lord Jesus, come, even so come, Lord Jesus, come. So we wait, so we wait, we wait for you. God, we wait, you're coming soon. So we wait, we wait for you. God, we wait, you're coming soon. Like a bride waiting for her groom, we'll be a church ready for you. Okay. 
Jesus is coming back. How are we waiting? Are you waiting with an expectancy? Are you waiting with a readiness? Are you waiting with an urgency? Not just so he'll make everything right. 
Not just so we can just get away from all the mess. But the maker of all things, the sustainer of all things, would just have his glory revealed as it is. And that we would be able to fully celebrate it with, with no things holding us back on truly who he is. He's coming back. You can be seated. Amen. You know, I wonder what it would really look like if you and I had a faith to live like he was coming back today. I mean, he, today. Like, rip open this roof. Like, rip open the sky like we're right where you are. We, we have this picture of the lion and the lamb coming on the clouds. I mean, he's the lion of Judah. He's the lamb of God. I mean, what would it look like for us to have a faith that said, you know what? I'm going to live like it's today. I'm going to live like it's, it's, it's today. That he would come, come back and that he would find me faithfully just saying, yes. And how I live and how I think and how I walk and how I do. You know, why would that be so important? Because when he does come back, he will gather together the faithful. He will reward the faithful. He will glorify and lift up and draw unto himself the faithful. And so it's important. I mean, it's, it's, it's just completely vital that we live like he's coming back. Today. So if he returned at this moment, would he find you faithful? Would he go, there's faithful? Now we know what it's like to have somebody show up unexpected. Like if you've ever been at work uh, and the big boss comes in and you feel like you need to kind of step up or you need to do something more like act busier than you are. I mean, you know what it's like for somebody to come in on you and you're like, oh, you know, if you feel like you need to do something, you should have been doing something before that happened, right? Okay, so we know what it's like to have somebody unexpectedly jump in on you. I've even felt that with church, you know, at times with church when people would go, you know, uh, you know, how are things at church? And there's this tendency for us to evaluate and for us to think through things. Well, you know, there's X many, you know, people engaged and, uh, and, and, and these people are growing. And, these, and it's, it's, it's like we want to justify by some things or maybe how we feel. And yet I, I just had this conviction a few years ago, you know, ultimately what does God expect of us as a body of believers? He expects us to be found faithful. I mean, faithful to proclaim who he is, faithful to live that out, faithful to try to grow, faithful to encourage each other. And so it's really about, are we being faithful? Uh, now, maybe you need to help me out a little bit. Not just faithful. How about we call it a, a different emphasis for today to kind of put it in our, our brain. And so instead of faith, faithful, can we say faithful, you know, like two separate words? So that's what we're going to talk about today. You know, how we can be faithful. Okay, say it with me. Faithful. Okay, come on up. Faithful. All right, now we're, now we're together. So we're going to talk about being faithful today. And really, faithfulness is this resolute trust relationship in the Lord. I mean, trust in that I understand that I'm a sinner in need of, of some saving. I need some grace. I have the wrath of God on me, Romans 1.18. I need some help because I cannot do anything by myself. So the death of Jesus on the cross, and the burial and the resurrections are, are a focus of mine because, because of my faith in him, I believe that he's covered that debt of mine. And so it's my faithfulness that reminds me who I really am. And who he really is. And how I need to live out this life. So it matters all if I'm faithful. Because it's then that I will live and serve and breathe in this awareness and this grateful obedience and service unto him. Why? Because I'm faithful. Now Jesus leads us on this journey in the parable today about how we can be faithful. Now who would say I take some. I want to be faithful. Let me see. 
Audience participation. All right, to get you ready for this journey, I need you to kind of get your hands ready, unless you have a baby. Hand. Okay. All right. So I need you to scrunch your eyebrows. I need you to grit your teeth. I need you to put your hands together until you white knuckle it. I want you to put your shoulders in, and then I want you to hold your breath. (sighs) Now just relax. That's what the tone of this passage that you need to hear the love of God in, okay? That's what the tone that we need to hear in is just take it down a couple of notches. Luke chapter 12, starting in verse 22. Jesus said to his disciples, those, those, those learners, those want to, then they were hearing these words of faith and they went, you know what? I want to do more than just hear it. I want to be faithful. I want to lift this up. So Luke chapter 12, starting in verse 22, hear the words of the Lord. Now understand his tone to you. Don't, don't get back to here. I want you to go, breathe out. Breathe this a long sigh. Okay, now your ears are ready. Therefore, I tell you, Jesus is talking, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will put on. So in other words, if you're seeing or hearing or feeling Jesus going at you, you're wrong, okay? Jesus is going, like in Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, no matter what it is, no matter what you're burdened down out here, no matter what you're feeling down here, take it down a few notches, breathe out, <sighs> come to me. That's what Jesus is saying. Come to me. Understand, this, you want to take the journey on being faithful? Here's where it starts in your minds. That's what Jesus is focusing on for a second. You want to be ready? You want to be faithful? It's going to start in our mind. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you'll eat, nor about your body, what you'll put on. For life, life is more than food and the body more than, than clothing, clothing. I mean, I, I, I put zoe on, on, on the, the cup uh, because uh, this is zoe life. I mean, it's the Greek word for life. I mean, that I would be satisfied, that I would be uh, enjoyed, uh, that I would be full, that I would be meaningful, that I would have purpose, that it would just kind of be full to the top and overflowing. Okay, that, that's what Jesus is talking about here. For life, not just living, not just making it, not just doing it until I come back, but true life to the fullest, life is more than food and the body more than clothing. He's just kind of, okay, again, just kind of taking it back a notch. Why? Because you and I are constantly bombarded that life is something else. That life is like an Instagram moment. That life is 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 like these little these like woohoo! I I did this or I saw this, you know, or you know Tennessee beat Alabama, and so it, that was life, you know, at, at at that moment. No, life can be in the everyday moments when you're with Jesus. And he's, he's, he's bringing us back. Yeah, those are graces and, and beautiful pleasures of God that you get a, a, a one in contest. Those are graces and beautiful pleasures of God. But that's not all of life because life has those up and downs. And, and Jesus is reminding it's it's more than just those things. It's more than just that. And again, he's trying to calm us on our mind. Verse 24. Consider the ravens. Now, around here, we've got grackles, okay? Uh, A raven is just a grown-up grackle, okay? It's a little bigger. Consider the ravens. They neither sow nor reap. They neither storehouse nor burn, yet God feeds them. How much more value are you than the birds? Now, maybe you're, you're still, you're going, okay, I went down from this notch to about right here. And you're trying to receive this as a word from the Lord. I'm not to be anxious. What? He's just trying to get you to, okay, relax. I want you to get those things that you're hanging on in your mind that you're going, yeah, but you don't know. You don't know my thing. You don't know how I feel. You can't. And and your energies want to expend on trying to make sure everybody else knows. And your energies are are like nobody understands. And, and, And can I just pause and say, you may have every right to feel what you feel. I'm not telling you don't feel that. 
And that's what Jesus is not doing. Is like, don't feel that. Don't feel anxious. No, no, no. He's trying to get you to redirect or replace that with something greater. Instead of holding on to the fear, he's going, just, just trust me. Have faith. And maybe some of those things that are weighing you down will go down and change. Consider the ravens, how they sow. They either do a storehouse or a barn. Yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? So can I with confidence say, even regardless of what you've got going on or how you feel, God knows. Thank you, Jesus. And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to your span of life? Now, again, don't receive this as a, a finger wave. The creator, king of the universe, is coming to, to talk with you in this moment, going, I spoke time into existence. Can, can you do any, you know, no, no, just, just come here. You know, it's an invitation. Just, just, just come here. If the inner you are not able to do such a small thing as that, why are you anxious about the rest? It's just kind of giving us a reset. Consider the lilies, the flowers, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass, which is alive in the field today, and tomorrow is thrown in the oven, how much more will he clothe you? And there's this statement, O oh, you of little faith. I almost hear it like little faiths. I mean, like talking to us like, I know where you are. I know what's going on. I know what you're feeling. Little faiths. You know, I mean, sometimes how we talk to our little kids or maybe, you know, if you've got a pet. I mean, don't, I mean, when I talk to my dog, it's like my voice goes up like 17 octaves, you know, I'm like, come here. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I, I, I hear that in the tone of God just going, come here, come here, come here. It's, 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 I got you. And do not seek what you're to eat and what you're to drink, nor be worried. For all the, the nations of the world seek after these things. You know what seek is. I mean, just that constant. Maybe that's a picture of you juggling. I mean, is, is this a picture of your life? Is this a picture of you internally thinking? Jesus is going to remind us it doesn't have to be that way. Your father, what? He knows that you need them. Verse 31. Instead, everybody say instead. instead. So there must be another way. Instead of us just trying to do it and trying to juggle it uh, and trying to do better uh, and trying, you know, which I'm so glad you're here. Instead, there's another way. He says, instead, Seek his kingdom. Now, the beautiful thing here, uh, say his kingdom. Now, his kingdom right here is talking about a, a, a verb that's used as a noun. Like we would say, I'm going to go swimming. Okay? Swimming is, you know, I'm, I'm going to go do this. I, I, I would almost like it to say his kingdoming. Uh, because I'm not just talking about, I, I don't believe the passage is just talking about, uh, let's go do something for him. Let's go build something for him. But it's, it's saying, let's welcome, let's get in on, let's get into what he's doing in his rule and his reign. Let's rip open the sky and live like he's talking about. His kingdom is coming, even so come. So instead, seek his kingdom rule and reign. In my heart, in my world. And these things, all these things that you need, that you hope for, I mean, that, you, that you're fulfilled will be, will be added to you. And then there's another word for us. Fear not. Say it with me. Fear not. We must need to hear that. Maybe we, we go, okay, I get you. You said instead there's another way, but fear not. What, what, where is he going with this? It's a reminder to us in our minds. There are going to be things that are pulling and straining at our minds to pull away from faithfulness unto God. And he wants us to turn from fear to faith. First Timothy or 2 Timothy 1 7. For God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, love, and sound mind. Uh, he, he's, he's wanting us to. Fear not, little flock, do you hear the tenderness? 
for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you, say give you, to give you the kingdom. What? All the glories, the majesty, the honor, the reign, the rule, the being in his presence. He's like, I'm fixing to give. Who, to who? Those that are faithful. To recognize who he is and what he's done. His presence. So he goes, is this... Sell the stuff that's been taken. You Give to the needy. Provide for yourself money bags that do not grow old with a treasure in heaven that does not fail, where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. And he ends with this. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Can you say that part with me? It's on the screen. For where your treasure is, there your heart be also. Yeah, different translation. <laughs> what, what is he saying? So, you may have an intent to do and to live faithfulness, but your heart is somewhere else. And so most of us go, well, I'll just redirect my heart and everything else. But what does Scripture say is the reality? What you're pursuing, what you're doing, that's where your treasure is. And you know what? Your heart's going to follow. And so it's not just a matter of deciding today that I'm going to be faithful uh, and, and then my treasure's going to be there and my heart's going to follow uh, place where your treasure is and your heart's going to follow. Jesus is telling us to free us from the burden that we've been carrying around in our minds. So just as a way, again, Jesus is taking us on a journey to help us to take it down a few notches, if you will, show us how it is to be faithful and help us to relax in Him for a second. So I'm going to invite you just to Hear the word of the Lord, the living word of the Lord over you. Would you just close your eyes and listen to Psalm 23? Maybe you know it. Maybe you'll say it with me. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, because you're with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. God is reminding you, you, you want to live like he's coming back today? Let your mind focus in on his character and his nature and who he is. And those things that are going to grab us all will come down a little bit. He's helping us to turn from fear to faith in your mind. Now, we had not even gotten to the parable yet. It's important for us to understand to have faithfulness that it starts with your mind. That he wants you to bring those things that you've got on your mind to him. That he wants to work in sync with you. Now the Lord in helping us understand faithfulness turns to, okay, well, what can we do? How, how can we use our hands? Well, that's where he gives us this small parable. Luke chapter 12, uh, starting in verse 35. Stay dressed for action and keep lamps burning and be like men who are waiting for their master to come home from the wedding feast so that they may open the door to him once they, that he comes and he knocks. Okay, hold on just a second. Again, he's talking about faithfulness, things that we can do, and he's given us some commands here. Stay dressed for action. Now, if you were in the Middle East, you would have your long robe on, and it would literally be tuck this baby up under the front side and tuck it in your belt. Why? So you can move, okay? Uh, it's just like if you want, to dress, you want to mow the yard, you dress a certain way. If you want to get on the roof, you dress a certain way, okay? That's what Jesus is saying. I, I want you to get your mind right, and then if you want to be faithful, you've got to be dressed for action. I mean, you've got to be ready, 
Okay, dressed for action is what he's, he's talking about. It, it, it so leans into what we hear and see uh, in Ephesians chapter 6. Finally, strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might, in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil and darkness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the full armor of God so you can stand firm. Okay, There's a readiness for this that Jesus is talking about. Stand, therefore, Paul's quoting, uh, stand, therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shoes for your feet, having put on readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, the only offensive weapon. It must be pretty important. How do you stand firm? How do you stand dressed for action? In this world, you have your mind right, and then Jesus says you have your faith engaged in him and the reality of who he is. And the reality, that's the beautiful thing about us gathering together even right now. It reminds us of the truth. It encourages us back to the truth of his faithfulness. So stay dressed for action. It says also to have your lamps lit. Now, back in that time, they would have a bowl, and it would have like some olive oil in it, and they would have a, a flax a uh, wick coming out of it, that would usually last for about four to five hours. Now, I don't know if you've lit a candle before, but after a while, you got to kind of trim uh, the wick. Why? Because then it, if it gets too big, it starts smoking everything, okay? Uh, and so there takes some attention to this. And Jesus is saying, not only do, do I want you to stand firm, I want you to be ready to engage your faith, but it takes some some readiness. Uh, you got to be equipped. You've got to be motivated to, to live this life uh, for his, his glory. I'm reminded of, of Luke chapter 24, 32, where Jesus was talking to the two guys on the road of, of Emmaus uh, on Easter, really, Sunday evening. Uh, and they were talking, and they didn't recognize Jesus at first. Why? Because their faith was a little down, if you will. Uh, but as he explained to them, as he reminded them of the law and the prophets and how Jesus did all these things, uh, and, and as Jesus broke the bread and gave thanks, they instantly knew who he was. Why? Because their faith was ignited in his presence. Uh, we need to be reminded of, of those things. And then it says that they were servants ready to open the door. Now, at a wedding feast, which Jesus was referring to, when you were invited, the feast was, was ready, and you were invited to come, it was like, it's ready now, y'all, y'all come on. Uh, and they knew that one was coming and just kind of had an idea of when it was coming, and then they didn't know how long they would be gone. And so... Uh, it, when, when the master left, the servants were supposed to continue on their duties to, uh, to, to be ready. Uh, and, you know, if you've ever been to a restaurant and they just have super great service, and it's like you, you drink something, you put your glass down there, just like right there, you know, you drop your fork. I mean, before you can even grab it, they hand you something else. I mean, there's something beautiful about having somebody ready and expectant and serving. I mean, that's what the pictures Jesus is drawing here. Just be ready. Why? Matthew 24, 44. Jesus said, be ready for the Son of Man comes at an hour you do not expect. Okay, so we've got some things about our, our mind. We've got some things that we can do. Maybe let's, let's draw some conclusions. How can we walk in faith fullness? Everybody say faith fullness. All right, you're with me. Number one, depend on the power of the Holy Spirit. Interesting, Galatians 5, 22, 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. So is it you need to do this harder? You need to try this more? No, it's actually a gift of the Spirit. So as I just engage my little bitty, bitty, bitty faith in him and who he is and just believe he has done what he said he's done for me on the cross and the Holy Spirit comes in and invades my life and starts 
producing those fruits that I may never have had before. Love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness. Faithfulness? I just need to get out of the way and pursue Him. I need to depend on the equipping of the Holy Spirit. How often does that need to take place? Over and over and over and over and over. Even though I, I know that I'm His, I need to keep going back to the well. You know what I'm saying? I need to keep going back to and getting refueled for what's coming up. I also just need to rest in the confidence of His promises. You know, that's why we sing. That's why we encourage each other. John chapter 14, 1 through 3, Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, wouldn't I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself. And there I will be, and you will be also with me. Woohoo! That's something that we can lean on. You know, we live in a day right now that more and more people are calling themselves Christians and yet do not possess a saving faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You can call yourself a Christian and not have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Understand that we are all sinners doesn't matter how good we think we are compared to everybody else. We've all settled for something less than God's ultimate perfection. And we deserve his wrath. That's why Jesus going to the cross, Jesus coming to this world uh, and living a sinless life and going to the cross for me, <laughs> that he was buried and that he rose again victorious, victoriously, that's what sets me free. It's my faith in him that makes all the difference. Understand, I am not holding on to him because of faith. He's holding on to me. And they just take the, the pressure off. I hope that your mind can be calmed some by that. I must constantly remember, he's my hope. He's my refuge. He is coming back. Why? Because he said so. And in that, it helps me to go back over and over to him. Because I, I know me. That's why I've got to go daily, sometimes momently, back to the truth, to the well. And why do I do that not just alone, but I do that in community? Because alone I will burn out. So hear the word of the Lord. Depend on the equipment, equipping power of the Holy Spirit and rest in his confidence. Second thing. And again, this, this was more for your mind. How about, how about for your hand? As you go, champion God's grace. Now, there's a pattern here for God's grace. It's, I have faith, and I understand there's a reward for my faith, and that produces grateful obedience. How do most people live? The opposite direction. They live by the law. They live by what they do. Uh, and so they start with, I must be obey, I must obey first. And that'll get me a reward. And they never get to faith. Jesus is very clear. Ephesians 2, 8 through 10, for by grace you've been saved. It's through faith. It's not of yourself. It's the gift of God so that no one will boast. It's, it's not a result of works. For we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works after faith which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So going to the well first, making sure my mind's right, and then going living that out. That's, what it's, that's how we champion God's grace. That's how we embrace it for ourselves and extend it to others. And last is serve Christ in your doing today. You want to live like Jesus is coming back today? Well, don't, if, if you're going like, if, like the big boss showed up and you're like, <clears throat> should have been doing something. I wonder what it would look like if we just lived that way all the time. Colossians 3, whatever you do, work heartily as for me, the Lord and not for men, knowing it, that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your word, your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. When I am spiritually faithful, 
I live with an expectancy of God's certain return. And it starts to revolutionize my perspective. It starts to revolutionize my attitude and my service to God and to my family and my work or school. So when I get stressed, I understand I'm not alone. It's not just about me figuring out. I take it to the master who has always been faithful. And so when I'm worried about money, I understand there's a provider who knows everything I need, and I take it to him because he's faithful. And think about this. This is so radical. If I want to be faithful, if I want to live like Jesus is coming today at any moment, then I've got to preach right now like he's coming through and he's going to go, yeah, you're faithful. Then I need to live when I, if, if, he, if he tarries, if he tarries and, and, and I go somewhere else or I go eat something, I need to treat other people like he's coming back right now. See how it revolutionizes your perspective and your response to other people? And then tomorrow, if he tarries, and tomorrow, he's like, I'm coming back on Monday. And tomorrow, in the middle of our work and stuff like that, may he find us living and doing and teaching and sharing like he's coming back today. Oh, I'm I'm worried about what other people... Don't worry about what other people are thinking and, and whatever of you. Wouldn't that revolutionize how you do your Monday tomorrow? Like, Jesus is coming back today? Well, I'm going to work like hard today. Huh. And, and, and you can notice or you can not, but I'm serving the master, Lord Jesus. And so, but you don't understand. My job's hard. Can I honestly tell you, I'm sorry. And God must think, God must be doing some things that you and I both don't see. We'll recognize that. And I do not discount that there are things that are super hard in this world. And I do not discount that they are emotionally tearing you up right now. And I know, uh, I live with the teacher, come on. (laughs) Yet, the Lord called you. And if he called you, he's going to equip you. Because there's some things that need to not happen this year, not happen, you know, by Christmas, not happen by the other 12 deadlines, by the other thing. I'm talking about what about today? You know, if I want to live faithful today, there's some things that God wants to do today. There's some, some, some interactions that God wants to do today. There's some people that need to hear about Jesus today. Oh, when we come to him and we allow him to reset our mind on who he is and allow us to equip us for the things that we have coming up, is it going to make it any easier? It's not. But it's going to fill it with purpose. It's going to fill us the strength that you need to make it for his glory. Because there will be a time that he comes back today and in this moment. Luke chapter 12, verse 37, just the end of that parable, says this. Blessed. Everybody say blessed. Blessed. You want some blessed? Yeah, me too. Bring it on and double it. (laughs) (laughs) Blessed are those servants whom the master finds awake. And when he comes, truly I tell you, he will dress himself for service and have them recline at the table and he will come and serve them. What? Even if he comes in the second watch, nine to midnight, or the third watch, midnight to three. I mean, it's late 30. You're asleep, okay? Unless you're at your post. Because he said, prepare. He said, dress for action. And he will serve them. Blessed are those servants. So so what can you look for? God's going to reward this faithfulness. God's going to reward this faithfulness. So regardless of what you've got going on, understand that the Lord God Almighty has something going on bigger and better. And he's going to accomplish all he's set to do. It reminds me of Jesus 
washing the feet of the disciples. How, how were they were like, <gasps> and yet their master served them? Revelation 22, 20, he testifies to these things. Surely I am coming soon. Well, what do we need to do? Prepare like it's going to be today. When the master returns, you don't want to be one of the unfaithful servants. There will be no second chances. There will be no excuses. Those found walking in faith, centered in on the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, will be gathered, will be rewarded, will be glorified in His presence. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for your word and your timeliness to know our hearts. Lord, I pray for a deeper awareness and understanding that I would take those things in my mind that are causing me to drift away from being faithful to who you are. Oh, well up within me, spirit, to get my mind right. Lord, uh, as you've given us tasks to do, I pray ultimately that you would find us faithful to do those tasks for your will and for your glory. So we look to you to, for your equipping, for your perspective, for your attitude, for seeing people as souls and you as sending us on missions today, in this moment, for your glory. Oh, and may you find us faithful. May you move our lips to speak of your glory and extend your grace because you are worthy. And oh, remind us even of these moments that you are coming back, that you are gathering the faithful, that you are rewarding the faithful, that you are sharing glory. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. For those that are joining us online, God bless you and thanks for being with us. Uh, we've got some questions that we kind of walk through, uh, and there's some things that you can kind of do as far as some next steps. We try to give you those. Um, we try to end on giving you a chance to interact uh, so that what we've heard doesn't just go in our ear and go out, but so many times maybe the thing that you need to hear is something that somebody else has to say. And so for just a moment, we're going to turn, and we've got some questions on screen uh, that we're going to talk to just for just a few moments. God bless you. Thanks for being here today. We'll just kind of turn and have a little powwow for a moment.